doing? Give yourselves a round of applause for coming out tonight. Right, we got like 18 more comics, so like strap in, all right? That's great. Uh, everyone looks so nice uh, over here. Uh, I got ready tonight, I got myself a haircut. Uh, I've been going to the same guy for a while, um, but now I don't like going to him because I feel like he's doing less work but charging me the same amount of money. <laughs> like this time he just put his hands on my head and he blew on me gently like I was a dandelion. <laughs> and then he swept up the floor and charged me 20 bucks. So I was like, that's bullshit. So, uh, we got any uh, single people out here? Any, you know, where, are my, where are my fellow frequent masturbators? <laughs> Alrighty, great. Yeah, I've been single for too long. Like, I'm so single that, like, I flirt with the uh, Verizon operator a lot. And I know it's not a beta message, but I figure, fuck it, I could use the practice. Because I've been consistently single since Bush was in office. The first one. Yeah. Single at 39. Does anybody have any idea what that's like? Yes, right here. You do? Yeah, of course. It's the worst. Like, it's kind of like when you wait to the last minute to go Christmas shopping. I'm just walking around like, oh shit, there's nothing left. <laughs> Everything here is either damaged, defective, or it's the floor model, which everyone's had their hands all over. Yeah. I, can't, I can't do dating anymore. Like, I get ghosted a lot, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, not because it's rude or anything, because I just don't think it's a term that we use correctly. Uh, because ghosts don't leave. <laughs> nope, they stick around and haunt. That's what makes them ghosts, right? <laughs> I mean, to me, this sounds like a whole, well, they went out for cigarettes, and that was three weeks ago kind of a situation, so. I don't think we're getting ghosted. I believe we're getting deadbeat daddy. <laughs> yeah, I think the only person to successfully ghost anybody was uh, Patrick Swayze when he did to Demi Moore back in 1990, so. Um, yeah, I wonder if they're going to start naming other, like, dating trends after classic 90s movies. Like, I can't wait to get home alone. Yeah, that's when they go on vacation and completely forget about you. <laughs> But I think the worst would be is if you got Forrest Gumped. Uh, that's when your white dress ex shows up and dumps someone else's kid on your lap so she can go off and die of AIDS. <laughs> Spoiler alert. You're walking around and everyone's like, hey Andy, what's with the kid? Oh, I got Forrest Gumped. Oh man, again? Uh, uh, third time this year. You want a kid? No, I love kids. I miss being a kid. You guys remember when you were a kid, like holidays were different? Uh, like St. Patrick's Day was all about, you know, wearing green and looking for leprechauns. And now when you're an adult, it's just an excuse to go out and celebrate some cultural stereotype. <laughs> like, I love those people that are like, I'm Italian, but I'm gonna get so fucked up on St. Patrick's Day because I'm Irish on St. Patrick's Day. I'm like, all right, cool, do you wanna come over to my house on May 5th and mow my lawn? We'll see how that turns out for you. <laughs> yeah, now I gotta celebrate all those holidays that people remind me of on Facebook. They're all like, happy Boston Cream Donut Day. Happy Rare Disease Day. I'm like, how do you celebrate Rare Disease Day? Do you just exchange diseases as gifts, hoping that you don't give somebody something they already have? That'd be awkward. Or you just get them a card that says, well, the CDC says you're one in 500,000, but I think that you're one in a million. Happy Rare Disease Day. So. Yeah, I was actually, uh, I spent some time living in Los Angeles. That was fun. Uh, when I told people I was from New York, everybody was like, ooh, New York, that sounds great. I want to live there. I'm like, well, I don't know, I'm from Long Island, it's a little different. It's kind of like if Boston, Florida had a drunk one night stand and New York got stuck raising its retarded love baby. Like, that's the New York that I know. So, yeah, it's great. Uh, pot's legal in California, which was awesome. Uh, yeah, it was weird, as soon as I landed in LAX, the air quality app on my phone, it went from excellent to far out, man. So. I don't think California is the best state to have legal pot, to be honest. Uh, I mean, with all the wildfires, mudslides, and the fact that an earthquake could swallow everybody up in any moment, I don't think it's a good idea that we should add a whole bunch of slow-moving paranoid people into the mix. <laughs> but it does sound like the best disaster movie ever, don't you guys think? Just watch a bunch of hippies try to outrun Mother Nature in her period from San Francisco all the way to Utah. Oh my god, sign me up for that trailer. Like, coming this summer, Die High, starring Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was cool being in a legal pot state because I got to do a whole bunch of things that like I normally couldn't do stoned. Like, you guys ever get stoned and go to Ikea? Oh, it's the scariest haunted maze I've ever been to in my entire life. Like, I went in there for a picture frame. I came out three hours later with an annual pass and five pounds of Swedish meatballs. So so. One of the other things I like to do is uh, I like to get stoned and watch 80s TV shows. You guys ever watch the A-Team High? You know, it's hilarious. Okay, for those of you who don't remember what the A-Team was, it basically uh, it was about these four Vietnam veterans. Uh, they became soldiers of fortune, so they went out uh, helping the little guy. 
So like in modern terms, like when the mayor of Flint, Michigan was poisoning the water, you'd call the A-team and they would settle things, not through grassroots political action, but through 80s blockbuster movie action. Yep, I'm ripping bong hits. I'm like, oh my God, there's AK-47s, dynamite, car chases, social justice warriors got shit done back in the day. But, uh, yeah, no, my favorite uh, character on that show was 80s pop icon, Mr. T. Yeah. That's right. What was Mr. T's catchphrase again? It was... I pity the fool. That's right. It was like, pity the fool. It's great. Well, the funny thing with this character was that, like, he hated flying. He refused to fly. So each week, all the rest of the guys had to try to figure out a way how to get him on a mission, you know, because they wouldn't leave a soldier behind. And they wouldn't do it through, like, coercion or bribery or anything like that. Uh, no, they would do it through the magic of Rufalin. <laughs> yep. He'd be like, I ain't getting on that plane, fool. And then he would drink a glass of milk and pass out and wake up in Guatemala 11 hours later. This happened every episode for five seasons. And I was like, pity the fool, dude, you're the fool. By the time I got through season three, I was like, wow, I had no idea that Bill Cosby wrote for this show. So, I was actually, uh, I was a different pothead one time uh, for uh, a bunch of different things. I ate uh, edible gummy bears. I don't know if you guys have ever eaten it. Okay, yeah. They'll mess you up, man. Yeah, they're cute, they're deadly. Ugh. Yeah, I got it because like the girl in the dispensary, she was like, well, these are the things that are going to get you that cool kind of couch lock high. You know, the kind where you come watch three hours of the Golden Girls and still think it's the funniest show you've ever seen on TV. And I was like, oh man, this is going to be the best Monday ever. So, um, she probably could have told me that one could have achieved this effect, but I eat gummy bears in handfuls, like when I'm at the movies. Yeah, like 10 minutes later, my whole body started sweating. And I got so high to the point where I could see through time. So we're gonna get President Bieber in 2032. I'm just giving you a heads up on that. Uh, oh God, I was terrified. Uh, I had to call up my roommate uh, to help me out, but he wasn't home, so I had to leave him a message. And I was like, yo, dude, you gotta pick me up like right now because I eat way too many gummy bears. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not like diabetic. You just gotta get here now because I asked everybody. I talked to the dog and he told me to call you, so you gotta get here. <laughs> yeah, <come on. laughs> I guess he thought I was pranking him because he never showed up. So I was like, all right, fine. I'll just go to the hospital by myself. No, I didn't get far. I just kind of wandered around my apartment complex for a couple hours and I freaked out my neighbors. And I made 40 bucks to this day. I don't remember what I did to earn it. All I kept thinking to myself was like, dude, do not fall asleep because if you fall asleep, you're going to die. And if you die, they're going to make pot illegal again. So you're forever going to be known as that guy that ruined pot for everybody. And at your funeral, your friends would be like, well, thanks a lot, dick. We just bought our plane tickets to Colorado. So now what the fuck are we going to do in Denver? Root for the Broncos? I'd rather be in the coffin. Thank you. And of course, my uh, gummy bear overdose, that's going to bring back after school specials, which will just torture a whole new generation of high school students. Be like, all right, kids, let's all go to the gymnasium. It's time to watch Dying for Edibles, the Andy Stewart story. <laughs> Starring Macaulay Culkin as Andy Stewart. <laughs> and I was like, all right, you know what? That's it. This is the last time that I'm ever going to get high on National Gummy Bear Appreciation Day. <laughs> my name's Andy Stewart. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you so much.